here to talk to you today about seven excuses that software testers need to stop making. <laughs> so this talk was inspired by a book I read called Extreme Ownership by two Navy SEALs. Um, and the basic concept is that uh, extreme ownership means to take responsibility for everything that happens on your team no matter where you are positioned on the team, whether you have people above you, people below you, everything that happens is your responsibility. So inspired by this, I started thinking, how can I apply this to software testing? And so I came up with seven excuses that I have heard before, sometimes I have made myself in the past, that we should all stop making in order to exhibit extreme ownership. Excuse number one, I don't know how the feature works. So sometimes you get a message from a developer who says to you, well, here's how you're going to test it. You're going to put in this value here and this value here and this value here, and then you're going to click the button, and then if you get this result, then it works and everything's okay, and you can just move it to done. Well, how do you know that they know everything that you need to test? Because if you don't understand how the feature works, you are going to be able to think of all of those things that perhaps the developer did not think of. So it's important to ask the developer to explain to you how to use the feature, how the feature really is supposed to work. And keep on asking questions until you really understand how it's supposed to work. Restate what you've learned to make sure that you've got it down correctly. There are sometimes situations where the developer doesn't understand how it works either. He or she says, well, I just, I know I was supposed to tweak the code a little bit, so that's what I did. Um, so if the developer doesn't know how it works, start asking around and see if you can find someone in the company who knows how it works. And if nobody knows how it works, bring that up with the team. Maybe it's important to talk about what kind of risk you might be adding by making this change. Excuse number two, there's no way to test the feature. Sometimes I have heard, well, there really isn't a way for you to test it because you don't have access to that box, so you know, we're just going to have to just say it's going to be okay. Well, does the develop is the developer able to test it? Does the developer have access to, to run those tests? Because if he or she does, you could ask them, hey, could we pair test? Maybe you could show me how the feature is supposed to work with your access that I don't have, and I'll, I'll watch what you're doing and then I can ask some questions and that's a really good way to find bugs because while they're demonstrating to you say well what happens if you do this and oh I didn't think of that so that can be really helpful if the developer doesn't have access to test the feature then bring that up with your team uh, you'd say to your team are we just gonna let this go to production without confirming that it really works how are we going to know that this functionality is working appropriately <clears throat> Excuse number three, the developer coded it wrong. Well, I tested what the developer told me to test, and the developer showed me how the feature was supposed to work, and I went and I tested it, and, and everything looked okay to me, but now it turns out that that's not really what the product owner wanted at all, but how was I supposed to know that? Well, that's where acceptance criteria comes in, and if your features don't have acceptance criteria, ask your product owner or your product manager, where's my acceptance criteria? How do I know if the feature is really doing what it's supposed to be doing? How do I know that the developer is delivering to you what you really want? And you can also ask the product owner to view the uh, finished product either before you've tested it or after you've tested it or even during your testing to validate that he or she is getting exactly what they expect with the feature. Excuse number four, some other tester missed the bug. Well, I'm a really great tester, but, but my buddy here in my team is not such a great tester, and he missed that bug, but that's not really my problem. I, I do things right. Well, um, if you take your product to production and customers are seeing problems, they're not going to care whether it was you or Joe who missed the bug. The bug got missed, and now they're seeing an issue. So one of the things we do on my team is we always make sure that we get two sets of eyes on every feature 
So we will have, we've got two test environments. So we'll have one tester test the feature on that test environment, and then the second tester will deploy it to the other environment and test there. And that's really helpful. The first week that we instituted this, um, I tested first, and one of my coworkers tested second, and he found two bugs that I missed. Um, you can also pair with testers from other teams. We do this at my company four times a year. We get together and we test each other's stuff. We just did this last week, and somebody in another team found a bug in, we only have about one page of a UI, but she found a bug there that's just a little tool tip that isn't working anymore, and we probably never would have noticed that. So that can be really helpful, too. And finally, you can have a bug hunt with everybody in the company. Get all kinds of people. Get the sales people in, and get the customer support people in, and just <clears throat> give them your new feature and say, hey, test this out. Tell us what you think. There's all kinds of interesting things that can happen from that. You could find that people aren't using the product in the way that you were expecting them to, or you could find that there are things that aren't intuitive. So that can be really helpful as well. Excuse number five, there wasn't enough time to test. Well, we've got lots of regression testing we need to do. We've got a feature that's going out to production tomorrow that we need to test. We've got all of our automation that we need to support. We've got these manual test cases that we're writing. How can we possibly get it all done? Well, the truth is, you can't, but neither can anybody else because we all know that developers are really pressed for time. Developers have to re release features without refactoring them as much as they would have liked to. And product owners are pressed for time. They have to prove to everybody that we're delivering what we're supposed to be delivering on time. So work with your team to establish a hierarchy of priorities. Decide what's really important to work on now and work down from there. Also look at the tasks that you're doing and see if any of them can be reduced or eliminated. For example, if there is a meeting that you need to have QA representation at, does every single tester need to go to the meeting? Or maybe could one tester go to the meeting while the other testers are testing? And that tester could come back and report on what was learned. Or if you've got a really complicated manual test case uh, management system, maybe you might want to scale back on that, simplify things a little bit so that you're not spending so much time maintaining that. Also, it's very important to set aside time for automation. It's a lot of ramping up work with that, but once you've got your automated tests running, it's so much easier to sit back and relax and say, okay, now I can do a little more exploratory testing, or now I can spend a little more time with this new feature. And finally, you can minimize context switching. One of the things that we do at my company is we have a meeting-free day. We do that on Tuesdays. It's not always completely meeting free, and we usually have stand up on that day. But beyond that, we have big blocks of time with no meetings, and that's really helpful to get a lot of deep work done. Excuse number six, I'll get blamed for missing this bug. This one was new to me. I had never heard it before, but someone in another team said to me, well, we learned all about security testing, and one of my coworkers found a security bug in production. And I said, that's awesome. And he said to me, well, yes, but then we were blamed. We were asked why we didn't find it sooner. So, well, that I think is a bit of a management problem, but it's important to know that even if you will be blamed, you need to speak up when you find something. Because if you don't speak up about the bug that you found in production, it's going to be a customer that finds that bug, and they're going to speak up. So uh, reporting on the issues that we find no matter where we find them, no matter when we find them, raises trust in testers. Uh, keeping quiet about them is what destroys trust. That makes people suspicious of us. And when reporting a bug, start a dialogue with the whole team about how the bug happened. Because as we all know, software testers are not the owners of quality. The whole team is the owner of quality. And so how did that get to the testers in the first place? How did it get past the testers? What was the disconnect there? And finally, excuse number seven, I don't know how to code. Well, I'd really like to do automation, but I don't know how to code, so I guess I'm just doomed to be a manual tester forever. Well, coding is not magic, and you also do not have to be a genius to code. I work with a lot of really wonderful developers who are very good at what they do, 
but they are not all geniuses, so you don't have to be a genius either. And you also don't have to learn everything about a coding language in order to contribute to automation. For example, you could, if, if there's an existing automation test suite, you could pull down that repo, make one small needed change, do a pull request, have that go up, be accepted, and then keep on doing that for a little while, and then maybe sometime you might be able to add one test on your own, building upon the model that you're already seeing in, in that test framework. There are also a huge variety of free resources available for people who want to learn how to code. Uh, one example of that is AppliTools has a test automation university with a whole bunch of free courses. And you don't have to code alone. You can ask for help. You can ask software test automation people for help. You can ask developers for help. There are plenty of people out there who are happy to help you because if they help you, then you know more and then you can automate more and then everything will go more smoothly. So that's all I have. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Here's a little bit about me, and here's where to find me. I have a blog that I would love for you to visit. I publish in my blog every Saturday, and you also see I post on Twitter, and you can find me on LinkedIn. Thanks. <laughs>